Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to talk to you about responsive neurostimulation of the CM thalamus for management of epilepsy. My name is Dr. Rashna Ali, and I'm a functional neurosurgeon. And assisting me with this educational video project is Nash Deshpande, who is currently a third year medical student at Michigan State University. So the central median nucleus is a well-studied and widely connected nucleus of the thalamus. It is a spheroid-shaped nucleus approximately 10 millimeters in diameter that forms part of the posterior interlaminar thalamus together with the paraphysicular and central lateral nuclei. Evidence of its connectivity is limited in humans. However, animal studies show connections within the basal ganglia, brainstem, and select cortical regions, including sensory motor, premotor, and limbic cortex. The CM's connectivity is theorized to play a key role in a range of arousal, cognitive, and sensory motor processes. The CM and its medial neighbor of the paraphysicular nucleus are commonly targeted for epilepsy as a unitary complex. The CM itself is divided into two components, a supramedial component that contains larger neurons or magnocellular CM and an inferior lateral component containing smaller neurons or the parvocellular CM. In recent studies, stimulation was most efficacious in the anterior an inferior lateral parvocellular CM extending into the ventral lateral nucleus. The parvocellular CM is known to innervate thalamocortical neurons in the adjacent ventral lateral nucleus, which will project to the premotor cortex. Stimulation of the central media nucleus is most effective, therefore, in generalized and frontal lobe epilepsies, given its connectivity patterns. It also has sparser projections to other thalamic nuclei, which provide multiple pathways for modulating the cortex diffusely. In patients with responsive neurostimulation devices inserted within the CM thalamus, Electrographical seizure onsets in the CM are often simultaneous with the neocortex or have a neocortical lead-in with rapid spread to the CM. Responsive neurostimulation modulates seizures by disrupting synchrony. It's a mode of neuromodulation, which is a closed loop system, which allows for visualization of thalamic coupling that leads to modulation of both thalamus and cortex to disrupt the entire epileptic network. The device is capable of utilizing the recordings from a key node within the epileptic network to trigger neurostimulation at another critical node via programming. It does have proven long-term neuromodulatory effects on various seizure networks. There's currently an ongoing trial called the Nautilus trial, which is a prospective, multi-center, single-blind, randomized, sham stimulation control pivotal trial studying the role of CM thalamic responsive neurostimulation. Generalized seizures in individuals 12 years or older with drug-resistant idiopathic generalized epilepsy is the target population. 100 participants within the United States are set to be recruited. And the primary endpoint is the time to the second generalized tonic-clonic seizure during the nine-month effectiveness evaluation period. Now we will present a case of a 39-year-old right-handed male with idiopathic generalized drug-resistant epilepsy since the age of one year. He has several different seizure semiology, including focal impaired awareness seizures that occur multiple times per day, as well as generalized tonic-clonic seizures. His pre-surgical evaluation shows that during phase one monitoring, he has a hemiconvulsive left hemispheric dominant generalized pattern, which is frontocentral parietal. His brain MRI shows some post-surgical changes from past corpus callosotomy that he has had. Nuclear medicine testing showed uptake in the left temporal lobe as well as the left insula and right insula. 
neuropsych testing, MAG evaluation was not lateralizing. Language and memory could not be reliably tested on functional MRI, and the patient has already tried and failed vagal nerve stimulation and corpus callosotomy. Therefore, given his generalized epilepsy, the decision was made to proceed with bilateral centromedian thalamic RNS. Now, traditionally, without the use of direct targeting, standard ACPC coordinates, which are atlas-based, would be used with reference to the mid point, which are used for targeting bilateral centromedian nuclei. These traditional coordinates are 10 millimeters lateral to the mid point, one millimeter anterior to the posterior commissure, and at the level of the ACPC line. However, prior trials that have targeted CM using indirect serotactic atlas-based approaches show that indirect targeting could, in some cases, lead to gross misplacement of electrodes outside of the CM, and therefore cast some uncertainty on the accuracy of targeting in these current trials, which likely contributes to some of the variability that is reported in the efficacy of CM stimulation for epilepsy, where seizure reduction can range anywhere from zero to 100%, depending on which study you're looking at. Therefore, we utilize direct targeting of the CM thalamus. As depicted in this figure, MP2 rage sequences are utilized, which is an edge detection method to highlight the intrathalamic borders that can be visibly seen on this MP2 rage sequence. The software processing system computes the gradient magnitude at each image point on the MRI, that is the change in signal intensity from one voxel to the next, where areas of high gradient indicate edges. The CM appears as a hyper-intense region, and on axial views, its medial and posterior boundaries are demarcated by two comparatively hypo-intense regions consistent with the medial dorsal and the pulvinar nucleus. Coronally, its medial and superior boundaries are identified by two hypo-intense areas that are consistent with parafasicular and medial dorsal nuclei. Its lateral boundary is less clearly defined. However, on coronal images, a thin descending line of hyperintensity consistent with the myelin-rich internal medullary lamina and central lateral nucleus suggests an approximate lateral extent. As depicted on this imaging, you can see that the CM's location on edge-weighted MP2 rate sequences is visually corresponded with its position determined by the croc morel and big brain atlases. The ideal slices to view the CM's approximate position are visible and best appreciated three millimeters superior and about six millimeter anterior to the posterior commissure. Across all trajectories, the target coordinates were calculated through this direct targeting method, and the average distances were 8.1 millimeter lateral, 9.8 millimeter posterior, and 1.1 millimeter superior with respect to the mid commissural point. And the trajectory had an average rotational angle of 30 degrees from the mid sagittal plane and 50 degrees from the axial anterior commissure, posterior commissure plane. Furthermore, the best seizure control that was seen in these direct targeting studies where the eventual electrode location was correlated with seizure control showed that the posterior lateral CM is indeed the sweet spot for obtaining the best seizure control, where the border of the CM and the CL depict the appropriate node to target in this seizure network. Currently at our institution, we use a planning software that is able to 
bring in patients, MP2 rage sequences, merge them with the pre-surgical CT scan, allowing us for direct targeting of the thalamus. Here, we will demonstrate a how left CM thalamic targeting occurs. So firstly, the appropriate sequence is brought into the software. ACPC frame and ACPC coordinates are determined. And then using direct visualization, the border between the darker pulvinar and the, the medial dorsal nuclei is identified. And you can see there is a clear hyperintensity that is visible about five millimeters superior to the ACPC plane at this level. And this can be easily followed up. The paraphysicular nucleus is now visible on coronal imaging as well. Therefore, this point of hyperintensity that is clearly visible is marked. Then a trajectory can be planned by switching over to a T1-weighted contrasted image to avoid any major vessels or any sulci or ventricular transgression as the trajectories are developed. This provides a probe's eye view of the Ben gun and allows all five tracks of the Ben gun to be viewed along this trajectory view. This patient, as you can see, has a changes consistent with frontal approach for a frontal lobe resection and a corpus callosotomy. There is a blood vessel right at the surface, therefore the trajectory can be changed it can be moved more posteriorly, it can be moved more laterally in any which direction pretty easily to avoid any major blood vessels or sulci. And then this can be followed down through the level of the target to ensure um, accurate and safe electrode placement. The surgical process utilizing this planning software consists of two steps. The first is the construction of the frame. This is performed by implanting four fiducials into the skull while the patient is under anesthesia. Once those fiducials are placed, the patient undergoes a high resolution CT scan and MRI with MP2 rage sequences for planning. Once this process is complete, the patient is awakened from anesthesia and allowed to return home. The CT and MRI data is then merged, and as demonstrated in the previous few slides, the ideal target is picked and a safe trajectory is chosen. This is then used to construct the 3D printed frame that is visible in green on this image. This frame on the day of surgery is then used for electro placement bilaterally. Once the leads are securely placed within the CM, the frame is then removed and then a craniectomy is performed, which will then house the generator for the RNS device. This surgery can also be done using robotic neuronavigation, as well as it can be performed in the intraoperative MRI where the leads are placed under intraoperative MRI guidance. Once the accurate lead positioning has been ensured, the patient is then brought back into the non-MRI space within the operating room and generator placement for the RNS device can occur.
this is a safe and effective way of targeting the CM thalamus to maximize optimal seizure control since patient anatomy can be quite variable, particularly in patients who have syndromic epilepsies or have undergone prior surgical procedures, which can make indirect targeting quite challenging. Thank you very much.